a, a project of Crossroads Relief and Development that we've been highlighting recently is our plan to drought proof over 1,200 families in one of the worst hit famine areas of Africa, a region in northern Kenya known as Turkana. We led a work team of 13 Canadians there recently, and we're joined now by a couple who were part of that team, Matt and Christy Sawatsky. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome, Thank you. guys. Thank you very much. So I have to ask you the obvious. You're a young couple with a growing family. Why did you get involved with this project? Matt and I have always wanted to be involved in a missions project, and we heard about this trip through Chester in our church, and uh, we weren't sure if the timing was right, but we really thought this would be a great opportunity, so we started praying about it, and uh, I opened up my Bible, and I was led to this verse in 1 John chapter 3, verses 17, 18. It says, If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need, but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Mm. So when I read that, I knew that this was the right time for us and everything else just fell into place. Wow. It's amazing how God's word just uh, mm -hmm. speaks to you so clearly and sometimes things just jump off the page mm -hmm. and, and help provide direction for your life. So, so Matt, what were your initial feelings when you realized, okay, we're doing this, we're going to Kenya? Uh, I was a bit nervous. I yeah. had uh, anxiety start to set in a little bit. Um, this was our first mission trip, like Christy said, yeah. and uh, so far away, all the way out to Kenya, and uh, we were going to be leaving our three kids at home, so mm -hmm. it was tough, and, and, and home, and all the comforts of our home as well, mm -hmm. so, um, but that anxiety and the nervousness, it went away when we, when we got there and yeah. started working with the local people and uh, just seeing how determined they are to uh, start growing food, Right. Um, so... How long the was the missions trip? Away. How long were you away from your family? We were away for 15 days, and we were in Turkana for 10. Okay. Yeah. Lots of travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a long ways. It is. <laughs> well, let's go to Turkana, and let's right. have a look at the, the compound itself, and you can uh, let us know what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is a training facility, or we called it the compound. What we're looking at is um, uh, we've cleared and grubbed everything off and we started burning stuff and making charcoal out of it, which we'd use that plant in the ground. These are uh, one of the pump houses here that we used. It's actually going to have, I think the solar panels are actually there now, and it's going to be pumping the water. You saw in the other pictures, uh, they have a hand pump there now. Now it's a solar powered pump. Right. So, so you're kept very busy there. What, what were some of the tasks uh, you were able to complete? Uh, well, we first of all, we surveyed and laid out all, all the 36-acre farms. Mm -hmm. We laid out all the buildings where they're going to be. We surveyed them and put stakes in the ground where they're going to be. Um, we put up the shade structure for the new plantings, planted some trees. Um, so yeah. that's the shade? Uh, yep, that's the shade. I guess with, with desert conditions and the sun, you, you have to do that for plants to grow properly? Right, right yeah. yeah. So, Christy, I want to ask you, what were some of the uh, challenges you faced by living and working in the extreme desert conditions? Well, we expected to be working in the heat, but what we didn't expect was the rain. It was rainy season, so um, annually they get about seven inches of rain per year, but I think we got that all during our time there. So yeah. there was a lot of flooding, and um, it affected our work, like the shade structure and... Um, threatened that. So when uh, we first saw the heavy rains come, we uh, all worked together as a team. It was the one thing that we did all together as a team and pitched in because the next day the rains came again. Mm -hmm. So we were able to dig, dig some trenches and uh, divert the water. And I think there's some pictures there of what we accomplished. So we were very proud the next day the rain came and uh, went we were ready the for right it. way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Wow. Look. Talk about streams in the desert. Yeah. There you, know. you go. Yeah. Uh, now, there's a lot to the, the project because mm -hmm. there's the solar powered wells, uh, there, there's the garden plots, and that, you know, wanting to drought proof over 1,200 families, and we're, and we're getting there step by mm -hmm. step. And this, this missions team was an important part of, of getting there. But, Matt, what, what experience uh, had the most significant impact on you personally? Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely was working with the local children. Yeah. Um, seeing how eager they were to help out. Uh, in particular instance, we had to survey the first couple days, and uh, we were out there surveying, pounding in the stakes, and the kids would follow us. The kids were very eager to help out. 
um, and I had misplaced the hatchet uh, oh, that yeah. I used to pound in the steaks, and I thought for sure our team had it, and they had misplaced it, so I sent the team away to go find the hatchet, and uh, it was just me and the kids left, and I asked the kids, have you seen the hatchet? Have you seen the hatchet? They couldn't understand English. No, there was, there was one person that spoke English there, um, but they all started to get together and started to chant. I said, no, have you seen the hatchet? So they all got together and started dancing and singing and clapping. And you got video of that. I got video are. here, yeah. This is actually a reenactment. This is the next day when Christy and I came out to the site. Um, so at the end of this song, it, it was a big production. They all came to the end of the song, and I didn't know what to say except for hallelujah. I said hallelujah. All the kids said hallelujah. Wow. I said amen. All the kids said amen. I hugged one of them, and then they all came and hugged me. Mm. <laughs> and it, it obviously touched you deeply because that, that left an impact on you. And, and to know, Christy, that, that those children and, and families, many families represented, mm. uh, are going to actually be given the gift of, of life and food and self-sustaining you know, opportunities through, through the farming and, and the planting. Uh, how did that make you feel? Well, it felt made me feel like I really wanted to get all that I could done while we were there because I really wanted to see this project come through to completion. So um, the people there are just amazing. Um, we met a 16-year-old a boy there named David, and he uh, really touched our lives. He's uh, lost his father, so he's the shepherd for the family. And uh, I asked him, he, he spoke pretty good English, I asked him, um, what are you going to do with the farms once they're ready? Um, what are you going to plant? And he started listing off the typical crops, um, sorghum and maize. And he said, but if we have water, then I will grow anything. Mm. So uh, I, I can't wait to see that. I can't wait for that to happen. And so you just allowed God to expand your territory. You, you, he took you outside of your comfort zone, outside of the box, and, and look at what you've done. Mm. What would you say to someone who's watching right now and saying, you know what, I've thought of maybe taking a trip with Crossroads Missions, and, but now maybe I should. What would, how would you encourage them? I would tell them, don't hesitate. It's such a rewarding experience. Um, just for Matt and I, it's changed our lives completely. So.